Really? It became out He is from Sweden. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, um, demo time. Uh, I, I'm really sorry about sort of the, the delays uh, and uh, it's, a, it's the first Graphonicon, so you can see you, you've, you've been to the first Graphonicon. And we're going to learn from this and the next event is going to be even more awesome. Uh, so yeah, uh, this is going to be a little bit tricky because uh, uh, yeah, I have to hold this while I, when I do a demo. So. Um, um, I'm going to talk about uh, 2.5, really, uh, so features that it's uh, going to come out really, really soon. Uh, so the original plan, I <laughs> worked tirelessly before going to the US to get 2.5 beta ready to be, to be released tomorrow. And I hope that can be the case. It kind of depends on how hungover I am tomorrow. <laughs> so uh, I, I hope to release 2.5, be a better release tomorrow. There's been some significant changes in, in Grafana 2.5, so, uh, uh, and um, changes that I'm really excited about and I'm going to talk about today. Um, so yeah, um, by the way, have you ever seen, seen the, this person, where yeah. the last metric point isn't yes. collected? Yes. I, had, I worked with a guy that every morning he went and commented on our sort of big, big display showing business metrics, showing user metrics. And it's so all, all sort of our important metrics and this dip in them. This doesn't look so good. <laughs> crisis, crisis meeting, guys. Crisis meeting. <laughs> he thought it was hilarious, but yeah, anyway. Uh, so uh, let's see. I have this uh, slide deck that just is supposed to remind me what I'm supposed to talk, supposed to talk about. So uh, I have uh, some new features in uh, is it just minor things that where you can sort of drag a panel to resize it. I, it's, it's a really strange thing. Uh, I almost always forget that it's there, so I always sort of use, uh, okay, let's uh, do this and let's change it. So uh, yes, so ingrained into the, to the previous behavior or, uh, so yeah, just uh, change height uh, or change width uh, and, uh, yeah. Is that safe? Yeah, it's safe. <laughs> <laughs> what? what, what? <laughs> um, another another uh, new thing in uh, is is a completely new time picker, um, and it's kind of inspired. I have to give credit to uh, Kibana Four, um, and uh, it's kind of inspired by that, uh, where you have. Uh, not just the regular sort of last, last five minutes, 10 minutes, last seven days, but you also have time ranges like today, which will show you sort of midnight to midnight, or uh, the day so far, which will show you sort of midnight to now. Uh, but you also have really complex sort of time ranges like yesterday or the day before, the day last week. So it will give you access to more types of time ranges. Um, so I, it's just a small, small refinement and improvement of what's uh, already there. So, uh, yeah, this is just uh, a minor thing. Uh, if you, a lot of people actually used it, but I, I don't uh, really know um, exactly how people use it. Is that you can sort of link a panel to another dashboard or to an external site, and this is uh, in the next release. It's much more simple to do. Uh, so, if you want to link to another dashboard, this is sort of linked to the same dashboard, uh, you can uh, now access that link uh, directly from the panel uh, instead of sort of go going through. Uh, this link was very hidden before, so it's just a, just a minor thing, making that more uh, accessible. Um, okay, so, so I spent a lot of time on this uh, uh, to improve user management. Um, and uh, so, so as, a, uh, as a Grafana organization admin, you can now invite new users. Before you could only add existing users. You had to be a sort of Grafana admin too. So now you can actually invite, send out invites uh, and, uh, and uh, they will be able to sign up or be automatically added to 
to the right organization. So the whole process of sort of uh, adding new users uh, is a lot more smoother and you can get sort of send actually in the email invites. Um, let's see. Th this is actually the thing I want to talk about because this is the thing I've spent almost more, most time on for this release and it's uh, the, the thing I'm most excited about uh, is, the, is the new Elasticsearch support in Grafana. Uh, so, I mean, it, it, Elasticsearch has always been there as sort of a small component in Grafana. I mean, uh, for, I think most of you maybe know it, but that uh, Grafana is based on this product called Kibana, which was, is all about exposing sort of logs analytics from Elasticsearch. So that's sort of the origin of Grafana, and I removed a lot of the Elasticsearch stuff that I, I wanted to build a pure graphite dashboard, so I removed all, all of the stuff that sort of wasn't needed for that, but I kept the Elasticsearch as a data source for um, storing dashboards initially, because that code was already there in Kibana, uh, but I also stored it, used it for querying for annotations. But what you can do in, uh, let's see, I had so many uh, uh, ghosts for uh, demo problems this morning. Uh, we'll try this. Uh, uh, let's see. Really? Maybe you're talking about clusters, yeah. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> okay. It will work after the demo. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's weird. The L cluster, L cluster is running, but it's not returning data. Um, and for some reason, it's not working uh, uh, let's see it was it was working just a minute ago and it's really weird that it's not working here oh we got data <laughs> <laughs> I got really worried there um, so we have uh, the Lexus search query editor um, uh, it's almost, I mean, after working with this for long, Elasticsearch, you can actually use it a lot for metrics. It's not just querying logs and getting documents back. It has a lot of features for doing uh, metric analytics. And um, if we start with a sort of blank query, uh, which is, uh, not sure if I can, uh, if, if you ever, is there any way you can sort of, Shut down the lights for. Yeah, great, awesome. So uh, this is a blank uh, query and it's showing no data. Okay, um, so this is just showing the number of documents we have. It's the same number of documents because this is just me having a fake data so a fake uh, data generator. But we can actually instead of just showing the number of documents we have, we can pick. A metric, we can pick some, something like a value um, and uh, we will also get a graph. But uh, we can also add group wise, like in any sort of key based uh, or tag based uh, metric store, we can add a group by term and then select something like host name. And we will get sort of uh, and a series per host name. But the really cool thing is that we can then also sort of say, say oh, we want to top uh, the top five or maybe the top two servers sort of based on their average value. And uh, we can pick another metric here, like say the max, and we can then also pick max here. So uh, it's really powerful in, in how you can sort of group by, and this is something you can't, I think you can't actually do this in Kibana, is you can, can't group by multiple terms. So you can, uh, here we can group by another tag or a field uh, group by source. Uh, so you can group, have multiple group bys you, you, and you don't need to group by a field, you can group by a query as well. So if you have, there's another type of 
Oh, fuck. This is an old, up, uh, old version uh, running on playgrafana.com. You can group by filter as well. So you can enter a Lucene query and have uh, sort of five or four queries and have a ser series be created for each query. Um, so if you have sort of want to have a series for uh, status code 200 to 500 or 200 to 300 or something, you have Lucene queries so you can get sort of a series per Lucene query match. Um, of course, you have uh, control over sort of how the, the data histogram is going to work. Uh, let me just uh, get some data here. So you can sort of specify uh, maybe a five minute interval if you want more, uh, more uh, not, not, not as high fidelity data. Uh, the thing that is really impressive with uh, Elasticsearch, and it's, it might, might be some, not be something you think of directly. So the, the number, this is just a fraction of the, the types of metrics you can extract from documents. You can have much more, uh, in, especially in uh, upcoming Elasticsearch 2.0, which I'm going to add later on. They have support for really complex moving averages with whole winters and, uh, and um, yeah, really deep analytics of your documents. And uh, I find these percentiles aggregations pretty powerful. You can uh, specify uh, exactly which percentiles you want to pick. Uh, and what I kind of like as well is they can add a count as well to see sort of the number of documents that these percentiles are based on, which is something that I find really important. Percentiles are, can be meaningless if it's just based on a very small sample size. Uh, so. Uh, I really like, uh, like, like this. Uh. And uh, yeah, let's see. Another thing that, I mean, we have uh, another thing. Uh, the whole theme in uh, Grafana 2.5 is going to be sort of around this sort of empowering you with more data source options. Uh, we're going to have focus on other things in, in the later releases, but this, the focus on 2.5 is mainly on minor improvements, as I showed you earlier, but also on the sort of adding support for Elasticsearch metrics, adding Prometheus is going to be a built-in data source. Um, and CloudWatch is also going to be a built-in data source. So you can, if you have uh, servers on AWS, you can directly, so without any other sort of service or, you know, or anything, so you can just add that CloudWatch as a data source in Grafana. But was, what makes this sort of really powerful, this new data sources and sort of mixing log analytics and time series metrics and maybe CloudWatch uh, is that you can also mix these data, uh, data sources in the same, in the same uh, query or in the same graph. <laughs> so uh, yes, make uh, simplify this uh, query above. We have, we have a, an average series that's coming from uh, Elasticsearch. We can add a uh, InfluxDB query. Uh, I'm not sure. If, yeah, this should be working. Yeah, we got an InfluxDB query. We can add a, uh, a graphic query. And the, the edit, I have sort of updated so the editors can sort of work together and, or, or live in the same space. Uh, and this is going to be really powerful for, for, for many things in the future as well. And uh, I kind of want to have something that make, can make, uh, in the future, I, I envision a meta query where you can sort of operate and combine time series from different data sources as well. Um, so yeah, th uh, this is something I'm really excited about and uh, something that is pretty cool that you can actually have uh, different, different types of data sources, but also, I mean, the most common use case is probably gonna be that you have the same type of data source, but from different environments. So you, you can have a same a graph that queries data from your data center in the, US and the data center in Europe, or so, so I think there are multiple use cases for, for just combining um, data like this. Uh, yeah, we got a, our graph at data source. Uh, so let's see if I, yeah, CloudWatch, I mean, um, let's see if uh, I'm locked, uh, no, that should be on the local. CloudWatch. So, I mean, it's uh, an editor that looks pretty similar to the others. You can select your region, you can select your 
metric namespace and your know, metric, and you can add multiple, one or multiple sort of uh, stats, as they call it in CloudWatch, and, uh, and then you can add your dimension. And there is a rich set of alias patterns, and it supports templating in, in Grafana as well. So it's a, 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 and it's quite different if you compare it to other sort of CloudWatch integrations. Uh, if you look at sort of SaaS providers that provide CloudWatch integration, so this is actually doing live queries against CloudWatch. Most SaaS providers that provide CloudWatch integration, they will actually require you to query all your metric data to get that into their metric storage, which is really can be really expensive. CloudWatch actually sort of charges you per query, so uh, it's actually can it can be more efficient to to have it in your phone and just pay for the exact sort of queries you use and for the queries you actually want to visualize. But it's something you have to be aware of. That's a, it, it, like a thousand, uh, one cent per a thousand query or something. Uh, let's see, Prometheus, I've already mentioned. Uh, it's, right now it has a very simple uh, query editor, but I, I mean, if, if, if the demand is high, uh, uh, I'm gonna, Want, I want to work on the Prometheus editor and make that as feature-rich as uh, the other editor, query editors are. Uh, so, near-term future. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, uh, the near-term future is the Grafana 2.5 release is going to be out really soon. Maybe a beta tomorrow. <laughs> uh, maybe next week. Uh, but uh, anyway, we're... we're uh, we're scaling up the, the, the development around Grafana. I'm hiring people in Stockholm. We're going to build a sort of Stockholm uh, office for Rain Tank that is going to be uh, uh, have a have a strong Grafana focus uh, uh, at least initially, and uh, it's just super exciting. Uh, we have so many, many sort of uh, fun things that we we hope to to, to be able to do. Uh, I mean, one uh, one thing is uh, that Deidre has already talked about alerting. Super exciting how 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 that's going to come together. We're going to offer some commercial support, of course, uh, but also just expand the, the, the core focus of Grafana, which is visualizing data, visualizing metrics, and that's going to be also something that we want to expand on. Uh, I mean, it, it's the obvious next step, given that we have now Elasticsearch support as well, is a, t a, data, t a data, a table panel. So that's uh, an obvious thing to, to add. Uh, I almost want to promise it, like in 2.6 or 2.7, it has to be a data panel soon, uh, or a, a table panel. So yeah, I, I hope to, to get that done. Uh, Long-term future, we're looking at sort of uh, a Grafana dashboard repository uh, and like sort of maybe a community site where people can uh, upload their dashboards and maybe dashboards, scripted dashboard or templates where they can people can share knowledge about how how they monitor their systems so, so if you are running InfluxDB and collect D or if you have graphite or collect D and, uh, and Redis I mean there should be pre-built dashboards for this scenario so we see a lot of sort of potential in having a dashboard repository and, and also to maybe community sites where people can share share their sort of experience and knowledge about, around how they me measure and, me and uh, visualize their their metrics uh, and also, of course, Grafana is going to remain 100% open source. Yeah, uh, super, super excited that Grafana has had its first conference and you have all been here and shared this with me. Uh, thank you all. <laughs>